How's it going Scrub Gamers? Welcome back to another video here at Scrub Games and today we've got our first deck profile for one of the Fusion deck, uh, Fusion World decks and the first one we're going to go for is Ginyu because it's my favourite character in the entire of Dragon Ball and one of my favourite decks to go into it. Like I'm so hyped that once again just like with Masters we're getting a Ginyu lead in the first set and it's still just like the other Ginyu a very strong one and a very good one to pick up. We're going to try doing deck profiles for each of the different decks, that way you've got a base understanding for anybody getting to it and, it, like, and watching my channel. You get a base understanding of like a list they can kind of use and kind of get an understanding behind it as well about why we chose such uh, cards and why certain texts are in there. Like, it's only the first set of the game but still there is some flexibility in like, deck building and stuff like that and it is a very fun game. Like, there is comparison between it be between it and uh, One Piece, but it's more, it's it's less like, like it's got the same kind of thing as One Piece in terms of product, like how like the... Um, the pull rates and stuff are on the on the game and how it's quite simplified, but it is essentially similar, like more similar to Masters. Like it plays exactly the same as Masters. Just one main difference is being that there's no counters, there's no counter play, counter attack, or counter uh, counter. So there's nothing that, that was the main thing in Masters that kind of confused people about how like counters when it can be used, timing stuff like that, and complicated rulings. It's a much more simplified version of Masters where um, without counters, like back out used to be during like, the first first few sets of Masters. You also get an energy mark if you go in second, so you've got energy that doesn't count towards your overall energy, but it's like a one-time energy, like one-time energy to use. So like any time you want to, you got an extra energy, and once it's used, it's gone. That's it. And uh, the winner of the random, um, random factor, decide who goes first, um, gets to choose the first second. So masters, it was a winner the die roll or the random method goes first. In Fusion World, it's that the person who wins the random method gets to decide if they want to go first or second. So uh, it was main three differences from the game, but it's an incredibly fun game. Um, also, there's no combo cost without uh, no combo cost for comboing as well. So and it, it's kind of changed from it where it's like now zero combo cost for like the big big things. So you don't so you can get more of them, but it's a, a downside to including multiple. And some things that have 10k, some like 5k, it's a little bit different combo cost. But it's simply the same kind of game, just more simplified, not more, not more less uh, less complex complexity. Uh, yeah, complexity. In it. But we're going to get into the Ginyu deck and we're going to go over the lead, then we'll go over the uh, main deck and hopefully you're going to enjoy the content and also and it's like the list. And if you're a fellow Ginyu fan like me, hopefully you're going to love this deck and enjoy it so much. So before we get into the video, feel free to like, comment, subscribe. It helps you keep updated with my videos as when they drop. And we're on the way to a thousand subs, so you can help out with that by subscribing as well. Keep uh, by subscribing, it keeps you updated with my content. And by clicking the notification bell, you get alerts to when my videos do drop to watch there and then or at a later date. So with that out of the way, and hopefully you subscribed and helped out the channel, we can um, get onto the deck profile. So, start off with the lead. Yep, here we go. We're using Deck Planet for this, so if you're um, Deck Planet being the best and only deck builder really in the game for any Dragon Ball game, fantastic use, like great team behind it, make sure it's uh, up to date and used as best as possible to give a great experience for anybody playing. It's like really nice and friendly to use and so many handy features. And here we go, we're going to have a look at the, the um, leader, so we've got the leader front of the side, so we're Ginyu, so we're actually Ginyu in this normal form where we see him in the um, anime, and then he flips over when he's um, to awaken, when he goes into, like when he's basically switched bodies with Ginyu, or uh, Goku. So if you're coming from One Piece, you might uh, be wondering like why it has both sides, what, from Masters, it's like because it's mainly follows Masters, with leaders in this game, you do have a leader in the One Piece, but they have a awaken mechanic, which is uh, at a certain point when your life's at a certain total you can flip over your leader because then you kind of like transform you like kind of get a boost and then fight back a little bit harder gaining power and stronger effects so you can see from both sides of this lead you've got both sides you have a when attacking draw one effect so when you attack with this leader either even when it's awakened or not you then swing into it when you're unawakened on the front side you're 15k power but when you awaken you're now 20k power so you've got a power boost you're both a ginyu force and a freeze army so you got benefits of those two there isn't too much many of that benefit from the leader being a certain trait but there could be a future well you do have it from the ginyu force but um not really from the uh freeze army per se and the awakening for ginyu so he's got like one of the uh, unique um awakenings like every single leader has the same kind of awakening apart from ginyu and broly so and they both have sit and broly and ginyu both have different awakenings but we'll get into broly when we come to his deck profile and with Ginyu, his effect is when you're at four, 4 less life, you switch it to 1 of your energy to active mode, then flip this leader over. So that means you get the addition, uh, additional energy for the turn you awaken, but you can do more things. Like the other ones, the average is draw. 
getting you here it gets an extra energy so when you flip over you didn't get an extra card you get an extra energy be able to use uh, play more things and yeah do more things which is why nice. so it's like very unique in that i love that especially c considering what his activate main is on his waking side so as you said when you flip over you did 20k you sort the same uh, when attacking draw one cards so you still gaining cards and now you've got an activate main which is once per turn by paying three energy and discarding two cards from your hand as the cost so it means to activate the skill you need to tap three energy and discard two cards and then you get to choose all of your gain, all your battle cards within your force and the special traits and switch into the active mode. So that means if you swarm like the name of this get the aim of this deck is to go wide and swing with everything. Like basically just put a lot of pressure on with like a wide body, like an army. And then um, use these effect, tap three disc discard the two worst cards in your hand. Switch back to active mode so you can then do it over again. Almost like a time skip. Uh, <laughs> where you get to yeah, essentially swing with everything, and when you think you're done, you restart everything and go back in again. It's really nice. It helps you go like when you go wide, you can just tip damage. If you just and most of the things you swing with a 20k, so go for 20k into a 20k leader. You can just don't have to put any common power to it unless you want to, and then you have to start chipping away. And sometimes you get to a point when all you've got is super combos left in your hand, and you've got to do your super combo, which is one of the best things you can do defensively to get 20k extra combo on a swing that only requires a 5k, but you haven't got that. Especially with boss cards being zero cost, like zero combo and stuff like that, they can start using up all their cards to help defend and the bing cards they've got are super combos they don't want to waste and boss cards they can't really combo with or combo with any benefit so that's it so that's the leader so quite simple just draws on both sides when awake you get any extra energy to get like a good use out of so you want to save the awakening if you can if you get if you can use it earlier to kind of do it when you can you either use your leader's effect or spam the board more and then when you're awakened you can then have the threat of um if you've got a wide board if you swing with everything you've got the chance to restand it all again so that is the leader. So hopefully that makes sense. And now we'll get into the cards. So first one we'll start off with is the one drop Ginyu. So this is a one drop 5k Ginyu, 5k combo. And to it main switches card the rest mode as a cost to draw one card. So this is a Ginyu, so it's a Ginyu Force of Freezer Army. One drops is a good turn one play to get us out. And you don't always make you don't always get the best benefit of play, uh, using this straight away. Like the problem with this is well they've got problems and benefits. So the benefit the downside it has compared to like I say, a cantrip is that a cantrip can just come down, draw a card, and then that's it. You draw a card, it's not what it does straight away. You, you can then use its combo power, it's not a threat to be attacked into unless you put rest or anything like that. It's just there to draw a card, help you free for your deck, and then be used. But for Ginyu, you have to switch the rest with the draw card, which means every turn you can get the draw card, every, turn you, every time it survives, you can switch the rest with the draw card. The only problem is. If you want to get use of it straight away, you have to then rest it and it's vulnerable to attacks. And every time you want to use it, it's vulnerable to being attacked into. And a beat 5k is very weak to be just KO'd. Like your opponent can play their own cantrip, run into it at 5k, you've got to waste compound to combo out of out. And they still want the leader swing into it as well. And early in the game, by using this to put this in the rest mode, the draw card, you're then taking away cards from attacking into your leader to help you awaken into cards you want to keep around to get as much benefit. Because the longer this stays on, the more you can use the effect, the more cards you're going to gain. And that's one benefit of yellow. And to go alongside that, we've got four Banan. So this is a two cost 15k, 10k combo. So the maximum combo power you can currently get outside of Super Combo. And his effect is at the end of your turn, choose up to one of your rest mode battle cards for freeze army and special traits, and switch to active mode. And almost, I think every single card in this deck is a freezer army. So you'd have to worry about that. You can switch anything to active mode. But the main thing you're going to want to do is play this a turn after you play Ginyu, or the same turn if it's later on in the game. To then allow you to use Ginyu, which is not a rest mode, draw a card, end of the turn. Use Banan to switch back to active mode, so it's now back in active mode. Can't be attacked into, you probably got to use effects to get rid of it, and then you can keep using the benefit every turn. Because one nice thing with Ginyu, because it's a Ginyu Force, if you have two of them on the board and then usually there's a Waking side effect to tap free, discard two to restand everything, it restands Ginyu because he's Ginyu Force, and if you've got two of them on the board, it kind of mitigates the fact you've got to discard two cards by then switching back to rest mode, draw two more cards to, so that way you've discarded two, the game back to, so you essentially just tap three in a sense, just to restand everything and get some more swings in. And this is a combo I like, and this is basically splashboard any yellow deck, so you probably see this in a lot of yellow uh, the yellow deck lists, because it's such a good one. Just turn one, play Ginyu, don't switch to rest mode, leave it. Next turn, switch to rest mode, draw a card, play banana, and then switch to banana, to, uh, then use banana to switch to active mode. And if you can get two, like two each of those on board, you then draw two cards a turn, and be able to restand them each time. And yeah, that's just amazing. That's just amazing draw power because that that way this skin uses them better than the cantrip because not, it's not just drawing one on the turn it's played, it's drawing one every turn 
over and over. So you, every turn you get a draw from your lead, or draw for turn, which you can charge if you want to, draw from lead for swinging, and then draw for Ginyu. So you're going plus for your turn, and maybe minusing one if you go to charge, but then plusing over and over again, which is more than most decks do. Well, at least most scholars do anyway. And so we have that as well, because at least that way, the banana is still tanky combo, which is quite nice. And even it can thread unawakened leaders to help push if you want to. And banana can also target himself. So if you just got banana, you can at least swing with him, then restand himself so he's out of the way of attack, and then a tanky combo to defend yourself. Because think of the benefit of freeze freeze leader, but in a battle card like banana helps out so all the yellow decks can kind of have that benefit of freestanding snake at the end of the turn. So that's the first two cards. Then we're gonna get back properly into the Ginyu Force. Then we're gonna get into proper Ginyu Force cards to help like spam and um, swing about. So, first one we've got is Raccoon, one of the, like probably the best, well, one of the best Ginyu Force cards. He's a free cost, so he's a bit more costly. 20k is still good, still pressuring Awakened Leaders. And he's a 5k combo, so he's not, like, because of its, how, like, because of its uh, power to how great his effect is, the power is a little bit there. Like, one thing you probably notice in cards is that depending on what two of the skill, like, you've got the three skills in the card, you've got the combo power, you've got the power, you've got the power of the card, the combo power, and the effect. And depending what those effects do to the cost, like you, you can have a lot of combo power, like if you look at skillless, you can have skillless have the maximum power, maximum combo cost, well, maximum power for their cost, maximum combo power, but then no effect. But if the card's got, a, like, same, but it's got same cost, but it's got a strong effect, it could have less power or less combo, or still good combo power, but then no combo power. Like, it felt like it, the, the game balances itself by if one, if two, one or two of the thing is amazing, but the, the third one's going to be a little bit less and not as great. And that's a nice way of how they balance cards. But like if two if two of those three areas are very strong, the other one is going to be compensated in the other area. But then Raccoon, his on play is amp to one card for your left to your hand. Then play it to one battle card would cost two or less with Ginyu Force in its special trait in your hand. And now you can play any of your Ginyu cards apart from the other three cost Ginyu, which we'll get to in a bit, for free off this. So that means for free energy, you can help yourself awaken by taking a life, so basically replace itself in hand, and then free plow any one of your ever Ginyu Force cards that isn't Raccoon on free cost Ginyu. And there's a very good, there's some very good times for this. You can like spam, you can spam out this Ginyu if you haven't got one on board and you got a banana on board. Like say they got rid of your first Ginyu, you can play Ginyu Raccoon, get the Ginyu out, use it to draw a card, and you're gaining more and get that established back out. But normally you're gonna just be paying one for that. You want to get a two cost to get more effect, effect uh, efficiency. Because you're essentially paying free energy. To get f to get four to five k combo uh, f power out on board, so you're paying three energy to play five costs worth of stuff. And we play four copies of this because it's such a great card. To keep this a way to help spam the board to go wide, so you get the more benefit from your leader's awakening, and also help you awaken as well as quick as possible. And then we've got a really card, like probably the best card to go with it, which is the SR Ginyu. So the S, like every color has uh, three SRs. One for each of the leaders, so we got this one's the one for um, Ginyu as a cooler for cooler, and then one card that's more generic, which we got for yellow being the freezer. So we play four copies of the SR in here because it's a two cost, I mean it could be free played off for Coop. It's 20k, so it could awake uh, Fred Awaken leaders. It's got 5k combo, which is good, which means its effect's gonna be pretty nice, and it is pretty nutty. So the on play is if you have three or more battle cards with Freezer Army in their special trait, switch up to two of your energy to active mode. And you can't play Ginyu for the turn, so it means it locks you out of playing the, the Ginyu card, not Ginyu Force card, just Ginyu cards. But if you play it out and you have three or more Freezer Army, not Ginyu Force, Freezer Army, so it counts any and most of the yellow cards are Freezer Army, you can untap two energy. So that's great, so it means if you just play it on its own, you've got two other Ginyu Force on, oh wait, Freezer Army on the board, which is going to be very easy to do. You untap two energy, it means you can, play it, you can play it for free every turn, just play one for free. Because you always have two everyone's, as long as you've got two everyone's. But for Raccoon, it means for one energy, you can pay out five cards worth of battle cards. So you pay pay free for Raccoon. Play out Ginyu as long as you got his counts you got itself, Ginyu, Raccoon, or itself, Raccoon, and then another freeze army board, and then untaps two. So then you've got five energy worth of battle cards for one energy, and you've got some ever good plays as well. But um, so this is a very good card. And this is more something like if you see a message you got blue doing, like untapping energy, making use of it. But kind of this deck's got it, which is nice. So you got an untap from lead, untap from Ginyu, it's very good. So even if you do, if this is in your awakening turn when you do it, drop Raccoon, play out Ginyu, untap to energy, lead it untap when you've basically for free just got out five, five energy, two 20k swings for five energy on board without paying any, without using up any energy really. That's amazing. 
Then we've got Never Ginyu target, so another one you can do, and this one's a little bit different. It's got the same cost and power as the Ever Ginyu. More or less specify cost, but specify cost doesn't matter at the moment in the beginning of the game. It's got no comma power, so that must mean it's an effect is even stronger. And it is it is good. It's not stronger, but it is good. Because it's on play, is look at the top five cards of your deck. Then reveal it to one non Ginyu card with Ginyu Force's special traits, and add it to your hand, and then place the rest upon your deck in a random order. So you'll see that in every color, like most of the every colors, most decks have a searcher, which are like a, a one cost battle card, 5k power, 5k combo, and then on then like a on play, look like find one, like look at top five, find a specific kind of card, and then add to your hand. Ginyu is exactly the same as that, but the only thing is it, it's a two cost, so it costs a little bit more. But it's got 20k power, meaning it actually threatens Waken Leaders. And it's a searcher that looks for um, any Ginyu Force that's not Ginyu, which there's a load of them. There's the extra cards, there's the ever Ginyu Force members. So there's a lot of targets. So the composite of that is got zero combo power, which makes sense. It's a shame it's got zero combo power, but it makes total sense considering its effects and stats. And once again, it's another one you can get off Ginyu Raccoon, so you can play Raccoon. For free energy, take a life so you replace Raccoon in hand, play out Ginyu and Ginyu replace himself in hand by finding a non-Ginyu Ginyu Force in the top 5. Helps you fill up your deck in it as well. The only problem with searches is the only downside of them is that no, you don't shuffle your deck in this game. So if you find something strong like a super combo or something you, like a Raccoon, like um, an SR Ginyu in them that you can't add to hand, you're then shuffling it to the bottom of your deck, meaning you have to draw for the entire deck just to try and find it again. Which is kind of a downside, but luckily with searching, you don't have to show you don't have to show your opponent what you're putting back. So you've got a benefit of not showing that you've just lost a super combo or an SR. But I play four combos it four copies of this because once again it's never Ginyu Force member. Nice little searcher. So if you don't have a banana on turn two, you've got this, and just yeah, very nice Ginyu Force member. Then we have got Berta. Not much to say about Berta. He's a never Ginyu Force member. He's a two cost twenty k and ten k combo because he's skillless. He's gonna have maximum combo power and co uh, power to its cost, which is two. So, and there we are. This is just never one you can play off for Coom, Just never Ginyu Force in name and a never search target for the searcher. So we have four copies of that because the more Ginyu you have, the the more you can get benefits out of some of the cards. Then we've got four Gordo. So this is this is a nice little tech. He's the weakest of the bunch because he's a two cost. He's not even that strong in the anime either. But he's a 2 cost, 5k power, 10k combo, and his activate main is switch this card to rest mode. Choose up to one of your opponent's battle rest mode battle cards, and it can switch to active mode to your opponent's turn. So this is a nice way if your opponent gets something big or something you don't want to them to attack it with. You can play out Gildo, normally off of um, Raccoon for free, or if you just pay an energy for it. So lock all your opponent's battle cards down and make sure it can't attack by resting itself. And then you can switch this back to active mode with Banan if you want to, instead of having the 1 drop if you don't have a 1 drop. So this is a nice way to kind of lock things down to kind of deal with it because yellow doesn't have that much removal or like barely any removal. But it's not a nice way to lock things down so even though it's still there, it's not being used in a, in a sense. And we had four copies of it because once again, never getting you force. At least 10k combo, which is always good to help out with uh, combo. Then we have the last of the Ginyu Force members that are, um, well, no, it's never Ginyu, but we're getting to it because I said there's a free drop Ginyu. And this one's a 1 cost 15k, so not as strong as the others, but at least it's got combo power in 5k. But it's got a permanent kind of like makes it so it's still useful. And it's permanent is during your turn. If you have a total of 3 or more cards with Ginyu Force in the special traits among your leader and battle cards, this card gets 5k power. So that means with every Ginyu Force, this is for using the Ginyu lead, the leader counts towards this, so you just need itself, your lead, and a never Ginyu Force on board. It gives extra 5k power to your turn, which means it's 1 cost 20k attacking, which means once again, it's threat and awaken leaders. So this one, you don't really want to spam off of Rikum, you want to normally spam off one of the two Ginyus off of Rikum, or maybe even a burst if you don't have one of the two Ginyus, because you're getting out more, because you're then not paying two energy for it, you free play off of Ginyu, Rikum, and then playing out Chase Batch, you're paying energy, and the more you go on wider you're on board, the more cards you have an attack with. So if you, you can get out multiple Chase in the turn, then, which then gives you more things to switch to active mode with the leader. So you play four copies of this, because it's just a very good cheap one cost to help spam the board and get as much benefit from the lead. And then we've got the next one being the um, Ginyu. So this one is only at two copies because it's not as, you're not going to play it as much as this. It's, it's quite costly and it's a free cost 20k. So it can take a combo and it's on play. It's add up to one extra with Ginyu in its special traits when you drop your end. Now that's a really good effect because we will see it a bit. The ever Ginyu Force card, the Ginyu Force extra cards, but it's quite costly. What you would do, like if you see the other ones, like Raccoon does a lot for it. Like it, Raccoon's a lot dearer, but it does a lot for it. It free plays out another battle card and can get a good use out of it. 
the Ginyu though, this Ginyu just gets you back an extra card and you, you want to save this for later in the game if you get to later turns to grab back very strong extra cards and you don't really be paying too much of the cost to do that. So you've got just two copies because then it's still, it's not searchable for Ginyu because it's Ginyu but it's still a 10k if you need it to combo and it still can grab back some extra cards you might have lost to help go through. Then we've got our four super combos. Every deck's gonna have four super combos. This probably might be at the <coughs> sorry. This might be at the start of any deck profile because every deck should have the four super combos. Because because with the super combo, it's a it's a card that you can only have a maximum of four copy four copies in the deck. So you can only have a maximum of four cards with the keyword super combo in your deck. So it means you can have four, and it's really good because it's got the it's it's a high costing card, being seven costs for 15k. And that's the incentive incentivize not playing it because you don't want to you don't wanna play these cards as super combos. You want to use them for combos from your hand. So they've got a higher cost to incentivize not playing them for the for a lower cost. And they're 10k combo, but they've got an auto where during your opponent's turn, when you use this card in the combo from your hand, this card gets 10k combo for power. Now, that's really nice. Like if you if you've ever played Masters, super combos are a big thing in Masters where they're like the they're like not just like this, you're only four of them it can be used in the deck, but they're cards that give a maximum combo power and beneficial effects that mean that you don't lose cards from hand to use them. So Masters is nor normally com when you're four when you're like a four less. Combo you combo it for ten K and then draw cards. So they replace themselves and they out combo by ten K, which is rare in Dragon in Masters. But for this game, every like we can get a lot of things at ten K and put that easily, but it just means that they're more they use more defensively than they are offensively in this game to like to help defend yourself a little bit easier and it is quite busted because when your opponent's swinging and they combo up to 35k they drop the seek they got the sr and they swing at you with a 35k sr that does double strike and they leave a 35 with this one card you can out combo it where normally it would take t two cards two cards from your hand to combo it you can just do it in one or if you go to the kill swing and they go up to 100k having multiple of these make it easier to get up to so to, to, to kind of out combo it to survive your kill swing and then clap back so we play four copies of it, and being a freezer army means it adds to any like the ben it's got more benefit in the yeah y the yellow chili one has more benefit. You're only going to see this one using the other decks. It's got bigger benefit because you've got things like Apple, which is a search where it switches himself to the move to look to soft card your deck. If it's a freezer army, it's your hand, which is what chili is. So it's easier in that aspect. Like you're going to have this over nail as a super combo because freezer army is a better benefit in yellow than say in the mech in currently for set one. So four copies of super combo. Well, every day's gonna have this. And then we go on to the extra cards, and we've got the first one at four being now you see the power of the Ginyu Force. So, this is amazing. This is if you've played Masters, there might be a lot of similarities to Masters. This is like the I Am the World Champion, where um, for that card, it was if you, have a, if you have a Kid Goku in your battle area, you basically draw two cards for one energy. This is exactly the same, because it's actually main if you have two or more battle cards with Ginyu Force and special traits, draw two cards. So, you know how easy it is to get two Ginyu Force on the go. You can play at two Jace, and there you go. You can recoom into SR Ginyu, untap energy for one energy, put, put two on the board, and then now you can play out. Now you are now you see the power of Ginyu Force. So pay one energy to draw two. Helps you fill up your deck a lot. Since you can easily get out uh, two Ginyu Force very easily, very quickly, this can help you draw through. So it can help you in the earlier turns just draw through your hand and get a big hand size, then spam out a load of Ginyu, uh, well Ginyu Force, and yeah, like is yellow has the best draw power and this is a really nice thing for this little engine, especially with this deck, you've got a nice little engine in Raccoon, the SR, now you see the power, this one drop Ginyu with Banan and Gordo for keeping things awesome. So we play four copies of this because this is just like a draw one, uh, what's it, tap one, draw two cards essentially in this deck. Then we've got four copies of Bonds of the Ginyu Forest and this is the battle trick for Ginyu, so every color has got like two kind of battle tricks. Most decks have a on your opponent's turn or on your turn battle trick, and then one in the star deck. Yellow has the cooler one, which is during your turn, and then you've got the Ginyu Force one, which is either player's turn, it's an epic battle. Now with this one is an epic battle, choose one choose your leader up to one of your battle cards, it gets 10k power for the battle, so minimum 10k for one energy is not too bad. But then it's got an additional effect of then this card gets 5k power for the battle. Well, then that card gets 5k power for the battle for each card with Ginyu Force and special traits and when your leader and battle cards. So with this leader, this is automatically a one cost 50k power boost. That's pretty good. But the more Ginyu Force you get out, so if you spam the board, the bigger this can be. I've got this to a point where it's been 60k added one energy, 60k onto a swing. 
using one card. So imagine swinging with, uh, swinging with say, a, uh, a raccoon, and then put an extra 60k power on it, make 80k power with one energy and one card. It's massive because then you put it's got at least if they want to combo out of that, they have to put uh, see if it's a kill swing as well. That's three super combos and a 5k, which is four cards just out combo your one card. That's amazing. So the wider you go with this board, the bigger this becomes, and you can use offensively or defensively because it's an anti battle. It doesn't just say, it doesn't say which turn you can use it on. So it's a really nice thing to just get a huge boost at minimum. It's a 10k in any other deck, any every other deck, and in this case, this deck with this lead. It's a minimum 15 because your lead is getting you for us, and then more with the rest. So four copies. This way you want to go wide. You want to go wide with the board, swinging with everything, restand, and on your last few swings, start dropping knees. So, they have, so once they've used that a lot of combo power, defending the little swings, you go with big swings after once they're depleted on resources. The next we've got two copies of Crash Ball. This is a nice little one where it's a. Uh, it's once again all these extra cards are Guinea Force because unlike in Masses, which is probably never different, is that extra cards have traits. So we've got these three being a Guinea Force and Freezer Army. So they're searchable by. They can be grabbed back by this free drop Guinea, and also searchable by this um, um, rare Guinea here, the two cost. And Crash Ball's a nice one where it's. Is a little bit different to in, uh, the ones in Masters. Same with Mas Masters was a counterplay one that rests the battle card coming in. This does the same kind of thing, this is not a counterplay, it's just draw one card so it replaces itself, so it's always better than the Masters one. And then you choose one of your opponent's battle cards, which is rest mode. So if you want something, if your opponent has something in active mode, you want to swing into and get like kind of attack, you can go with this, pay one energy, draw one, rest it, switch to rest, and then you can start attacking into that card. And this is really nice. I really pay two copies because it's not the best. Uh, it's like it's not the like it's not bu like busted. You don't use it all the time. It is a nice way instead of using the freezer that can do the same thing which is on the body and take a combo. You can use this because it draws the card and replaces itself. And it's just a nice space to switch to the rest mode, but also not losing cards from hand by replacing it as well. And we have this mainly in here because it goes in combo combo with the golden death beam, which we also have two copies of. Now this is really the only removal yellow has. Yellow doesn't have any removal outside of this. Everything else just locking down and keeping it like uh, keeping it stunned, frozen. So this is a one cost. Activate main. Choose up to one of your opponent's ba rest of battle cards and with a cost three or less and KO it. So yellow's only removal is for something in rest mode that's three or less. So very very limited. So it does struggle with removal, but you can always swing into things and just go hard, hard at lead and while also drawing a ton. And yeah, the downside of this is that its traits are Freezer Clan and Freezer Army, so it's not searchable by the um, Ginyu Searcher, and it's not recurrable by the Free Drop Ginyu. So we only have we have two copies of Crash Ball and two, 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 uh, two copies of Golden Death Beam because of the fact that Frost is a problem in red, where it just stops you from attacking for any of your 20k's, and the SR we were hoping for give a boost to Ginyu Force during your turn, but sadly it didn't. It does something just as good being untapped too. But then Frost can shut this down, so you need these two cards because sometimes they'll play Frost and maybe not attack with it, so it's then can't be attacked by lead and put in a Bonds of Guinea Force into it. So they'll leave it in active mode and just have it so it's what's on the board, you can't attack with you you can't attack with your board really. So we have Ginyu, we have Crushable and Golden Death Beam, so you can use Crushable, put it in the rest, draw a card, and then Death Beam to pop it so you can then swing with the rest of your stuff. So because until unless we get uh, pre preside best one. I think it's currently just best of one, no preside or anything like that. So until we potentially get um, a preside or, or something like that, like we have in Masters, you have to main deck these things. But then maining two of them is not too bad to help deal with your back worst matchup, because that's the only thing that really like really hinders this deck. Nothing else like massively hinders it. So you've got to have these this card, and yet at the very worst, you can charge it or you can ditch off your leader's effect when you restand your entire board. So there's those downs, there's those upsides to be able to use it. But yep, yeah, that is the Ginyu, that's my Ginyu Force deck. So 50 cards, we want to keep 50 consistency because you can play, like just like Masters, up to up between 50 or 60 cards to your main deck. But to keep the maximum uh, efficiency, you want to have 50 or 50 cards. You don't want to be playing more than 50 because you want to keep consistency to make sure you see the things that you want to see when you want them to see it as early as possible. And if you, there's no decks currently in the game that wants to go higher than 50 at all. There's nothing that wants to go higher than 50, so always stick to 50. And it's the list. And normally with this, you kind of want to go second with this deck because that way you can have more energy on your swing, and because that way you can on turn on turn two as quickly as possible while take away from green the fact that they get that energy marker to help ramp as soon as possible, and on your turn two be able to drop Recoon with a super, the SR, 
So you can untap energy and flood the board more to kind of aggro greed down quickly to force the things like Broly to awaken or to force them to then have to start comboing to on to defend against these swings. And yeah, because you want one thing you do want to make sure to use is when you get to your turn when you get to your turn when you have five energy, or even four energy and an energy marker, if you can awaken that turn, you want to play Raccoon to then help you awaken if you have, if you're not in if you're in range to in range to awaken but not yet awakened. So like five energy five life. To then play out the hit you on top once you've paid one energy for that, so you still got four energy to use. And then awaken with lead, so you've got your five energy use. Use two energy or one energy or if you use two use have three energy then to use for your lead effect like after you swing your board, restand it. And use the upper two energy to either play things out before you don't affect like two Jace. Or if you have bonds to give you force, maybe play out one Jace to get more uh, stuff on board. And then swing with everything, leader restand. Swing everything again on that last swing, drop upon to give you force to put in a lot of power into the last swing. Or instead of using that, use two now, now you see the power to give you force if you've already got a, quite a big board to then draw more power, uh, power to put more combo power in, force your opponents to combo out more things uh, to waste their hand more. And that is it, that is the Ginyu Force deck profile. So let me know how you feel about it. Give me a like if you if you um, enjoyed the deck profile and the explanation behind it. Uh, yeah, comment down below if there's anything, any opinions you have on it. If there are any questions you have about it or any like changes you suggest, because there might be things I've missed out. But I've, I've, this is my favourite one. I think I've hit everything, but let me know if you have any questions or reasons why about anything, and I do as best I can to explain them or I, I take it into account. And basically, give it a bit of testing. But apart from that. Feel free to subscribe, help us get to a thousand subs, and I'll catch you in the next one, which might be a deck profile for the Freezer deck. So, that's it. Bye for now.